Hey there folks. So this episode, um, I wanted to go through and fix up some of my save game logic. Um, yes, I'm sort of putting off some of the other stuff because I need to find time to sit down and actually work through a lot of it. Um, and for anyone who's been following along, I have recently started a new job that is eating up a lot of my time. So first thing I want to do this episode is actually going to be fixing up the save game logic around our stats. Um, so if we go take a look at our core stat here, you can see we have this logic right here where we are saving it to a string and pulling it out from a string. That works well and good but it's overkill we don't need to do this um, a lot of this information we can do through adding in a support class or a support class class support function now with that what we're going to be adding in is a um, archive insertion operator so the way these work, friend class or friend function f archive reference operator, and then the double left. Um, I've always called them alligator or crocodile, but that is your insertion operator. F archive reference a r f core stat reference stat ar insert stat dot current ar insert stat dot max ar insert stat dot per second tick return ar now what this is doing, this is an, a function used as part of, uh, let's find our game instance. This, the serialize and deserialize. Um, so in here we're serializing everything and then uh, where do you do? I have too many functions in here. Uh, load game, do, 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 load level. Let's go to that. It's load level implementation is the one I want. That's the one. No, uh, no, no, oh no, it's continue load level. Burr. Or complete complete load level that's it I have too many functions and bouncing between a couple different projects I'm yeah um, these two here so what we're doing is we're either setting it where's AR defined uh, do, do, do right here mem reader and then mem writer so one is reading it one is writing it um, and that tells the serialization process either we're pulling information out of the actor or the actor component and then also tells it okay we're putting it back in so this function works bi-directionally so now with that, we want to go into our statline component. Um, and in here you can see these are already all set for save game. Perfect, that's exactly what we need. And then we want to go into our source file for component, statline component. Now in here, I'm going to go through a couple quick things to look at. Uh, do, do, do. Where are you in here? Uh, here we go. Git component, save data implementation, and Git component 
oh, sorry, set component save data implementation. Now what these are, for anyone who's not been following along since the beginning of this series, this is where we were going through and it's like, okay, we're pulling out all of our health or all of our stats and we're getting the save string. For the player character, we do have our complex needs um, and that's a configuration option. So we may not always have that, but we don't need this. All of this information is now going to be handled with that friend class we just created. So this can all, um, for purposes of this, I'm going to comment it out. We want to leave the component class because it's just pushing some information into our save component data. And we want to return that obviously. And then in here, we don't need any of this stuff because again, we're not using it. Now, I'm commenting this out simply because right now I'm not 100% this is going to work. Um, I'm 99% sure this is going to work. So save that. And then I believe that is uh, just stat. I just want to make sure. Uh, do do do. Uh, do, do, do. No, this is all I want here. Just raw data. Yeah, if it's only here. Yeah, that's the only places we're using that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to run a build. Um, this should hopefully build perfectly fine. If it does, I will be back once we're in the editor. Uh, if it doesn't, I'll be back to fix any broken code we have. All right, so as you can see, we are in the editor here and things seem to be working okay. The first thing we're gonna do, um, in my case, is I just wanna check my save logic is still set. So we're in our third person character here and I've got this little dev testing area. Uh, this is where I throw in uh, hard-coded key bindings and specifically these two, seven, uh, dev save, nine, dev load game. All right, so seven to save nine to load so i'm gonna hit play uh yes that's a animation blueprint we need to get that fixed let's go character find our stat line and our stats uh stamina we can see with the top left our tick rate is so low in our hunger and thirst that it's not worth waiting for those to go down. So I'm going to get my stamina right down so that it's um, almost completely gone. Okay, so it's almost gone. Uh, we are at, I'm going to wait for hunger to drop to 9.90. That uh, might take a bit. So let's just run around. Okay, 0.9 zero okay i'm going to save i'm going to wait for our stamina to restore um and yes that's going to take a bit but that's also going to let hunger drop down so let's walk around a bit as you can see we're still just a headless shadow we got to get that fixed uh stamina is pretty much up let's try nine now okay and you can see our hunger went back to where it was and our stamina dropped back down to zero so that is working now for that save i fixed that up uh, it's probably something i should have done at the start but that that's one thing i want to cover with this is yes when you're first uh prototyping and designing things it is okay to use inefficient methods because you're going through rapid prototyping, um, go with what you know works and you can implement quickly. So in that regard, let me just minimize this a second. This whole string save process using um, like the string concatenation and then the chopping from, that one is something I had used previously for a long time with my previous employer. Um, 
not obviously for a video game, but for other quick save methods for things that we weren't overly concerned about. With that, I use that because I know how to do it or I knew how to implement this and I knew how to do it quickly. It was one of those things that I've done A, with my previous employer for years and B, through the multiple iterations of this project was something I've done again. Now, on that note, that doesn't mean you have to leave it in. Just because your original code isn't the best. When you're in that prototyping phase, as I am right now, to get a rapid iteration of something to say, okay, this is working, go for it. But there is a caveat there. Make sure if you know 100%. This this is something I didn't think about. So honestly, I was like, oh yeah, this will work. I'll leave it. Um, this is a much cleaner method. We don't have to worry about any of this. So, but anyways, as I was saying, yes, put it in. But if you know it's not the best method, move for better implementation. Implementation. Add a comment. Do something like that because you're accruing technical debt. You don't want to continue accruing technical debt throughout the entire development process. You only want that while you're going through the prototyping phase. As soon as you're done prototyping, technical debt should be reduced instead of added to. So I'm very close to the end of my prototyping phase. Ultimately, I have at this point two components I need to figure out. I need to figure out my equipment system still, which I'm putting off because I still haven't had a chance to look and dig into the whole metahuman stuff. And a sleep system. And with that, once those two are done, I would consider my project is out of the prototype phase. At that point, you're moving into, okay, let's start working on these systems properly. Um, actually saying that, I still have my building and crafting systems I need to add, so no, I'm not close to the end of the prototyping phase. Um, but anyways, besides the point, when you're in these early phases of, okay, can I make this work? Can I get it to do what I want it to do? It's okay to have sloppy code. It's okay to have inefficient code. But, as I said, if you know the method you're implementing is not the best, which now, 100%, if I ever had to implement this again, these would always have this comment. But, anyways, to save repeating myself 100 times, the short of it is, prototype phase, you can have sloppy code. You can have inefficient code. In as soon as you're done that, that is the end of where you want to have sloppy code. You want to have as clean as efficient code as you're able to. Now that doesn't mean you're not able to go back and refactor and improve it as you're learning. Because as I said, I figured this out when I was working on a separate project and I just haven't had time to circle back to get this added in. Um, Obviously, I had a very short recording window this time, so this worked perfectly to fit in. But keep in mind, though, as you're going through, like I said, your prototype, be, you can don't write bad code intentionally. Write code that you can write quickly and works. As far as you know. Um, but after that... Again, like take your time, figure it out properly. So now with that part out of the way, uh, let's fix up a couple other things quickly. So as you can see in our viewport, uh, let's switch this one into game mode. Uh, it doesn't let you do it. We are just ahead. So let's grab that head, 
find that. I'm just going to quickly add in some other mesh. Do do do. Feet. Feet mesh. Leg mesh. So I just want to quickly get this player fixed up a bit. Uh, where's our torsos? I'm going to give him a trench coat. And hands. I know they're in here somewhere. I swear I had gloves. Where are they going? Too many assets and no idea where they all are. Uh, do, do, do. Really? Where are my gloves? Oh, I'll just put hands in. Uh, hands should be the right ones. Yeah, and then that is the full mesh. Uh, I'm give him a backpack. What backpack can I give him? Uh, that one. Now, obviously, this is before we get the equipment system done. So, got that. Uh, play an editor. No, oh, it's not going to throw that blueprint error again, is it? Uh, animation, blueprint, and a BP. Here we go. This is the one that's got the error. You can see compile error. Well, that is because over here, where is it? This guy. Um character what are you tf character get new equip anim state we need this to be let's go check in visual studio quick uh how do we change those up base class that was humanoid character base yeah humanoid character base okay And that is up here. If I could spell humanoid, TF reference. Yes, change variable type. It's gonna do a bunch of weird stuff, but there should be no errors. Cast to humanoid TF humanoid character base. Now, does that fix everything? No, where is the compile error? I was just calling the wrong function, that's why. We're in. There we go. And you can see he's now animated, so. Let's try this again. I'm going to hit play. No errors. You can see from our shadow we are now moving and running around. So, with that though, folks, I'm going to end things off here. This is a shorter episode. Uh, as I mentioned, right now, having changed jobs, um, I am not getting anywhere near the amount of time I want to spend on this. So, uh, if you did find this useful and you want to help support the channel and potentially let me focus on doing this a lot more, feel free to like, comment, uh, subscribe. I know I don't normally, well, I haven't been doing that, but the channel has been seeing some pretty serious growth the last little while. And it's got me hoping that maybe I could end up doing this, um, not full time, but at least part time. As always, folks, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Hop over onto the Discord channel, or server, I should say, and ask your questions there. I do tend to sp like respond on Discord a lot more often, just I get the notifications compared to YouTube. But, as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.